Welcome back to the Russell Muscle YouTube channel. Got a few questions on how I can afford the Hellcat, so I got a couple of my partners. One of them got a red eye, one of them got a wide by the Hellcat. And so we just gonna go through each car and then talk to y'all a little bit of how we can afford them and how to earn income. So without further ado, let's get into it. Now we're gonna check out the red eye first. As y'all can see, it's the last call, but we've been having fun in it. Real's got the red goods. So, so he about to do a couple miles to it. He about to get a, a he already got it. They get the course of cola intake put on. The rest of it, he gonna do is some performance mods. About to get another thermostat 180 degree thermostat but Progress. So he about to get the stripes put on, then I'm gonna put the uh, trim and the glass in it, like I got on mine. Y'all already seen this one. Only thing I did different is from the last video is I took the red on the SRT off, just left the Hellcat logo red. These are wide body wheels, all four, front and back, 20 by 11s, but I ordered some aftermarket uh, Vicrez, 20 by nine and a half for the front. I'm gonna keep some 315s on the back. Show y'all this last car badge. Now we're just gonna go over what we do for a living and how we able to afford the cars and everything else. We've known each other since we were teenagers, 16, 15. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What was your first investment, you know what I'm saying, that you made a profit on to get you to where you at now? Well, my first investment back in 2015, I bought my first house. Uh, market was still good and uh, I turned around and the next year and I bought a uh, flip home. So, you know, I always wanted to get into the real estate. So when I got a taste of that, my people always told me, you want to get the house first and then, you know, the cars will come later. So, you know, I kind of experienced that, you know, at a younger age. So, like, it's been, you know, real good to me. So, you know, I'm able to get the stuff I want to get. Uh, the cars I want to drive, I can get them without a problem, you know. So, that's exactly. always been, you know, and then I went from, you know, driving for a company to, you know, owning two trucks now. So that's, that's been real good to me. So, you know, just... Staying down, keeping my head on right, and you know, just listening and soaking up that good energy and that knowledge, you know. So, yeah, and then what was your work ethic like when you was working for a company? Like, was you know what I'm saying, I mean, calling out, or were you, man, was you there I, getting it in? I, I was living in them jobs, man. And, you know, it was just yeah. like it was one of them things I had to sit down and be like, you know, hey, the same energy and time I'm putting in for, this, for these people, I can do it for myself and you know, walk away with way more. And not had to worry about clock, hitting nobody clock. So that was the biggest thing for me is like not punching the clock right now. So. Yeah. 
A lot of people don't believe in buying houses. They want to stay in apartments. That's cool, but get a condo. A condo got the same concept apartment got, except you're building that equity. So when you sell it, you're walking away with money. You cash out on the Hellcat. Yeah, definitely. People say it ain't the right time to buy, but at yeah. the same time, you down here paying twenty five, three thousand dollars to rent somebody's stuff. You get what I'm saying? So I can pay that same twenty five, you know, three thousand a month and own the house. And then when the market get back right, you can always refinance the house. You get what I'm saying? All right, bro. All right, bro. I got my other partner Chris, so he gonna let y'all know how he got the red eye. So, bro, what you did to work your way up to this level? Now yeah. you can do what you want to do. I got a twin brother. We did the same thing. Like, yeah. We, got, we did the same thing. And <laughs> I saved mine. I did. I got what I wanted. He got a lot of shoes. He got every pair of Jordans you can ask for. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah. He got every Jordan. So. And really, he even in that, it's money in that. Yeah. He, 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 he want to resell and do yeah. his thing. So I just say, everybody got to pick their lane. Everything is not for everyone. Yeah. This might be my thing. That might be his thing. We twins. So it's crazy that I'm saying that. But just because we twins don't mean you like the same thing. Yeah. And that goes for people out there too. Cause uh -huh. Just because you see somebody else doing it, don't mean you gotta do it. Exactly. You go your own way. You go, make you see. Okay, this works out better for me than it did for him. You can't accept something being handed to you. You never learn the value of it if it's being handed to you. You yeah. have to grind and work for it. It's just so you know the dedication, the hard work, the blood, sweat, and tears you put into it exactly. to get it. So once you get it, you feel good driving it. First time in the red eye. In the track mode. Next day up here in Tennessee delivering a load. Been up since like two this morning. But uh, how I got into trades, my first one, I turned 17. I went and uh, worked for a flooring company called Woodridge Incorporated. So with that company, we did celebrity houses. We did millionaires. We did mansions. Uh, Ted Montana Grill, we did their restaurants. And so that's how I learned flooring. Then fast forward 21, got my CDL. Truck driving school took three weeks. And uh, I went over the road for like three months. I went all the way from down here in Atlanta to up to New York, Maryland, Baltimore, all that. And I did that for three months, came back, worked for FedEx eight years. My seventh year there, I bought the truck, hired a driver to drive my second truck. Ended up letting that go, went to Pepsi two years, went to Gordon Food Service four years. And so uh, when I was at Gordon Food Service in 2020, that's when I saved up my bread quit, cashed out on the trailer, cashed out on my tools, and then I started my own flooring business in 2020. Uh, got my LLC and uh, created all my little social media accounts, business accounts and all that, put it on Google so people can Google me when uh, they want a job done. And uh, yeah, so that's what I've been doing the past couple years. And I recently got back into a truck probably a year or so ago. I go back and forth. So when one of them slow down, then I jump to the other one. When that one slow down, I jump back to the other one. Or I do both of them at the same time. So I might drive the truck this week. If I got a big flooring job that come up next week, then I hit up a crew. We go and knock the flooring job out next week or on the weekend, however I got to get it in. You know what I'm saying? I'm always doing something to provide. You know, a lot of people see the channel because of the car, but I got three teenagers at the house too. So I had my kids young. Me and my wife been together 20 years since we were teenagers. Matter of fact, since we was our kids age. And so uh, we had our kids young right out of high school. And so since 19, I've been putting a roof over their head, never had to ride trans public transportation, and never had lights off or none of that. But I always, you know what I'm saying, went out there and did what I had to do. I always been a hustler, even since I was younger. Every job I was at, I always had a side hustle. I grew up in environments where, you know, people was getting killed, where people was going to prison. You know, where it was a lot of hustlers, you know what I'm saying, selling dope selling cars, whatever you can do to make money, that's what we were doing. And so 
that's where I come from. Just that that work ethic of always hustling and grinding. Even when my grandma raised me, she worked for Marta for like uh, 26, 27 years. You know what I'm saying? And drove the train, then she drove the bus. So I get a lot of my work ethic from her. But yeah, doing what you got to do so you can do what you want to do. So even though y'all see the Hellcats and that's what most of my video is about because that's what I have now, we still working our way up. And it ain't even about the cars, but speaking on the cars, like I want to get a Lambo. I want to get, you know what I'm saying, something else. And so we just at a level now to where we just working and grinding our way to get to where we want to get to. And I'm also say this, you, know, you can agree to disagree. I know it's a lot of different beliefs going on, but one of the biggest things that changed me was when I gave my life to Jesus. And I'm not talking about Jesus that you see on the pictures or on you know, some of the old videos or movies they used to show. I'm not talking about the Christianity that was cool with slavery and that was killing people back in the day. Now, Jesus is not cool with none of that. So you gotta read for yourself and not just listen to what people told you. And then just cause somebody said they're Christian don't mean they're Christian. Certain things were done in the name of Christianity by people that wasn't really Christians. So you just got to seek God for yourself, but giving my life to Christ is what really changed. I ain't grew up in a church, so I know both sides to it. And so that's how I know, like, he real. That's how I know. You give life to God, God will reveal the purpose, because at the end of the day, he put us here for a reason. And so a lot of times we'll go and try to figure out life on our own and kind of create our purpose or create the reason we're here. And never had that true fulfillment. And the true fulfillment only come from God and from you seeking your purpose and seeing why God put you on this earth in the first place. I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to show y'all a little bit of my house, some of the work I did on the inside. And speaking of real estate, we were talking about earlier in the video. You know, I bought my first house at 24. I flipped that one, got this one built, and I got like a quarter million in equity in this one. I can flip this one, go get something else built. In real estate, buying a house is a cheat code. Even if you don't like it, it's worth the taxes. It's worth the, you ain't have to have an HOA. You move somewhere else who don't have HOAs. But it's worth, you know what I'm saying, everything you're going to pay out for is maintenance on the house when you build that equity up and you're able to flip it. And all the improvements you do in your house, all they're doing is adding equity to it as long as it's legit jobs that's being done. But I'm about to show y'all some videos of the house. There's the kitchen. Excuse the trash, my son got to take it out, but these are also some floors that I install, LVP. So that's what I do for the flooring business. I also put all the crime molding going around there. Put the wood trim on there to make the accent wall. Me, my wife, and my son put that tile on the fireplace. It was just a plain drywall like the rest of the walls. So we put the tile on there, put the little corner pieces on there, and then put the molding at the top. On the TV myself. Put the ceiling fan up. They had a brown one. And I had one of my partners come by, and he put the recess light in there. They also a demo, but so watch a movie or something, you just demo. So this whole thing right here was open. I built this wall, put some glass French doors in it, and I put the little trim going around it, a little artwork. I also built those shelves on that side. Yeah, there's like a little chill room. Mounted the TV, put a shelf up there with the PS5. I have a little chef right here for all our kids' accomplishments. This hallway leads to the bathroom. Got a two-story for you. Not gonna show y'all the upstairs, but I do plan on swapping that chandelier out. This the garage slash gym, as y'all can see. Got a motivation center right here. Pretty much everything you need. Upper body, lower body, cardio over there. Cardio on the punching bag. Show y'all some of this dope artwork from one of my partners. So he did all these. Kobe, you got MJ. Iverson stepping over Tyron Lou. Last little display, sport wise, but got Dion, Braves and the Falcons. Got Devontae Freeman. Got this signed by Michael Turner. Picture signed by Vic. That's when the Falcons pulled up to my house for Father's Day. Surprised me and my brother. You got, uh, I forgot who that is over there, number 55. But got this football signed by Matt Ryan. This signed by Drake London. 
that's signed by the whole team that went to the Super Bowl, because we ain't going to talk about that, but the Hawks basketball signed by Dominique Wilkins. You know, I think I got something else up there autograph, but yeah, this the little Falcon set up. Hopefully we have a better year this year or next season. And that's all the little Mopar stuff or the car stuff. So that was the tour of the house. If you're watching this video, I don't want y'all to think we bragging on anything. Like, I give all glory to God. And I know it's because of him that I'm able to do everything that I'm doing. And also, all this stuff passing away. You know, when you die, you can't take none of this stuff with you. So that's why I had to put that in there about God and how me giving my life to God is what started everything. But, you know, at the end of the day, whatever his will is for your life, you got to be content with that. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Man, I hope y'all can see that you don't got to rob, you ain't got to scam, you ain't got to do nothing that's not legit to get ahead of life or be successful. And you do it the right way, you ain't got to worry about nobody taking it from you. But I'll see y'all on the next one. Much love and God bless.